What's up everybody? It's your boy Mario Dude 64 back at it with another video. And yeah. Today I'm going to be giving you my top 25 NBA players list. Uh, a couple years ago, me and my friend Sadnix Fan1 made videos like this, and this year we're going to be running it back with another list. I'm going to have 3 tiers to my list, and 3 being the worst, 1 being the best. And rounding out the third tier, I have Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Before I get any further, I just realized that I forgot to include the honorable mentions to this list. So I'm going to put those up on screen now. And let's get back into the video. So I guess technically this is my top 26 NBA players. But I just didn't have it in me to rank one over another. They're so equally skilled. They're both lefties from the Bronx. And... They just both had great seasons. Julius Randle had a worse playoffs, but in my opinion, a better season. He put up 24 and 10. Brunson also put up 24 and 6, I believe. And he carried them throughout the playoffs. But overall, they're both 25. Following the two guys from the New York Knicks, I have Larry Markinen at 24. And then at 23, I'm going to have DeMontis Sabonis. Then James Harden at 22. Tyrese Halliburton at 21, Paul George at 20, Kyrie at 19, Trey Young at 18, and the last spot of tier three, I have Kawhi Leonard at 17. So a lot of the guys I just named in tier three were old stars like Kawhi and Kyrie who are kind of letting time get the best of them. And then others like Tyrese Halliburton and Larry Markkinen were rising stars who are just joining the top 25 list. And it was kind of cool to see them mesh into a uh, tier three. Anyways, at 16 and in my first spot of tier two, I have Anthony Davis. Then at 15, I have Donovan Mitchell, followed by Jalen Brown at 14. And then at 13, I have Ja Morant. And at 12, I have Shea Gilgis Alexander. At 11, I have LeBron James. At 10, I have Mr. Dame Time himself. At 9, I have Jimmy Butler. At 8, I have Devin Booker. And at 7, I have Kevin the Snake Durant. I got AD at 16 because he put up 26 and 13. He had a great season. Probably the best defender in the playoffs this year. And he really helped LeBron and the Lakers make the Western Conference Finals. He had a great season. I put D. Mitch at 15. Because he was really able to take the Cavs and turn him into a contender this year. Which was great to see. At 14, I had Jalen Brown. I mean, next to Tatum, who has so many touches. He still put up 27, 7, and 4. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, at 13, I had to put Ja. He could be higher, but he got owned in the playoffs. And he had a lot of controversies. And it really hurt the Grizzlies. So I had to put him lower than I would like to. At 12, I mean, Shea's got to be at 12. 31 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists. I mean, it's ridiculous. They still missed the playoffs, but he just absolutely carried his team. A great season from Shea. My next two spots don't need much of an explanation. LeBron and Dame are both established stars that don't seem to ever age or get worse. I mean, they honestly get better each year. Dame dropped 32 this season. But at 9, Jimmy Butler definitely need an explanation there. At face value, you might think, hey, how is he number 9? He only put up 23, 24 points a game, and he didn't really stand out and compare to anyone else. And the answer to that is playoff Jimmy. The man led one of the greatest playoff runs in NBA history, obviously taking his eight-seeded heat to the NBA Finals. And then against the Bucks, he had one of the greatest series I've ever seen, dropping 56, 41 like it was nothing, and absolutely owning the Milwaukee Bucks. And then for the last two guys in Tier 2, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, I had a little bit of trouble ranking them over each other. I put Kevin Durant higher because they were kind of equal co-stars. Devin Booker might have been a little bit better when they were both actually on the Suns, but Kevin Durant carried the Nets for his time over there. 
And once he went over the Suns, they were 8-0 before the playoffs started. So, amazing impact. And I think he's barely got the edge over Booker. All right, the moment you have all been waiting for are Tier 1 players. All of these guys are pretty much MVP caliber players. And starting us off at number 6, I'm going to have Jason Tatum. This season, Tatum put up 30 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists while leading the Celtics to the 2 seed in the East and one game away from the NBA Finals. He just had an amazing season, and I think in the upcoming years, he will be an MVP finalist, if not the MVP of the league. At number 5, I got a bit of a hot take here, but it's Joel Embiid. The MVP of the league, the scoring champion, 33-10-4, yet I still got him at 5, and for one reason, and that's the NBA playoffs. The man has never made it past the second round, and to be fair, He's had some valid excuses for that, but still, there's no excuses anymore. This year was his year. They were up 3-2 against the Celtics, yet he still couldn't close it out, and he played pretty forwardly in that series. At number four, I got Luka Doncic, and man, I thought this was going to be his year. He put up 32-9-8, but it really was a disappointment this year because the Mavericks didn't make the play-in tournament. Uh, it was going great. In like December and January, he had like five straight 50 point games. He was dropping 60, 20, and 10. And then they traded for Kyrie Irving. And we all know what happened. And number three, I got the Greek freak himself, Giannis Antetokounmpo. You might be noticing a theme in this video, and that's that the playoffs actually do matter. Giannis put up 31 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists for the year. And obviously, that's awesome, but. When you're losing in the first round as a one seed to an eight seed, I can't have you as a top two player in this league. It was a great season from Giannis, and I think we'll see a bounce back next year. But man, you lost to the Heat. Come on. And number two, I got the greatest shooter to ever touch a basketball, Stephen Curry. He put up 29, 6, and 6 for the year. And I just got to say, I feel bad for Steph. Steph really had to experience what it was like to backpack this year as he just didn't get much offensive help. Jordan Poole was a very big disappointment. Klay Thompson shied away in big moments. And it was really just him and Kevon Looney going against the Lakers. And Kevon Looney was sick against the Lakers. It was him and Kevon Looney against the Kings. And against the Lakers, it was literally just Steph. And he couldn't do it. And that leaves us with just one player. At number one... I have Bogdan Bogdanovich. All right, all right, it's Jokic. Who else could it be? I mean, the man put up a 25-point triple-double for his averages, and then once the playoffs rolled around, he just steamrolled everyone with ease. He's also one of the best passers in NBA history, and he's easily the best passing big man in NBA history. And there's just no way to stop him. You want him to score, he'll pass. You want him to pass, he'll score. He can do everything, and he's unstoppable. And I think what's the best part about his domination is that he doesn't even care about it. After he won his championship, he said, I just want to get home. I don't want to go to the parade. I want to go see my ponies in Serbia. The NBA is nothing but a side gig to Nikola Jokic, and it has become very clear to me that this is Nikola Jokic's world, and we, we are just merely living in it. Thanks for watching. Bye. I mean, I've been fearless, I let him feel this. You know, I spit it, no cap when I killed this. I'm better hit him with the rest, let him hear this. Where this war tour better be a field trip. Yeah. Uh, sack it up and then I double it.